I am telling you the absolute truth. If you will start praying on a regular basis about the things that are temptations for you, you will have the strength when that temptation comes not to get into it. What are you thankful for? Do you thank God daily for even little things? I thought the other day what it must be like for people that can't walk and have to use a wheelchair just to get out of bed in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and have to do it. I'm like, thank God my legs are still working. Thank God I can see and here and I can still work and thank God that my life is bearing good fruit. There's so much to be thankful for. And the more thankful we are, the happier we get and the madder the devil gets. Be thankful and say so. Say so. That has to become part of every day. I think every morning we need to dedicate ourselves to God. Let's look at Psalm 25, verse 1. Talk about rededicate. We need to do it every day. Unto you, O Lord, do I bring my life, plain and simple. I get that psalm out very frequently and read it. I love Psalm 25, 1. Unto you, O Lord, do I bring my life. It's a great thing to do every morning. Just sit or stand or kneel or whatever you're comfortable and just lift up your hands and say, here I am, Lord, I'm yours. Use my mouth, use my mind, use my hands, use my feet, use my eyes, use my ears. My finances are yours. I commit myself to you, God, and dedicate myself to you. See, we spend too much time wanting, telling God everything we want. I love what the Christians, what Paul said about the Christians. He said, they gave as much as they possibly could financially, but they also gave themselves to the Lord. You know, it's easier to give your money than it is to give yourself. <laughs> this morning when I asked God if there was anything he wanted me to do today, I thought a couple of times before I said it. Because what if I don't like what he says? <laughs> today I got a good one. Enjoy yourself. Yes. <laughs> Who knows what I'll get tomorrow. Is anybody hearing me today? Yeah. Now, come on, this is, and you think, now I know somebody's thinking, well, I don't, have, I don't have the time to do all that. Good night. What time would I have to get up to do that? Now, you know, I, you're gonna do what you want to no matter what I say, but I'm telling you, you need to go to bed at night so you can get up in the morning. Well, lady, now you've gone to meddling. What time I go to bed and what time I get up is my business. <laughs> Come on now. The Bible's full of it. Jacob rose up early and sought the Lord. Abraham rose up early and sought the Lord. David rose up early and sought the Lord. Jesus rose up early as was his habit and went off by himself to pray. All I can tell you is if you don't spend time with God, you are going to have one tragic day after another, after another, after another, after another, after another. It's amazing what happens when you give God that first little bit of time. You know, I mean, you don't have to take two hours to do this. You, I, you can do what I'm talking about in 10 minutes if you want to. And I believe that you'll, be, you'll, you'll find your time with God so fruitful that then you'll start making ways to get more. You can also, instead of sitting at the lunch table and gossiping with all your other co-workers, take your lunch hour, go by yourself somewhere and spend that hour with God. Well, I might miss what's going on at the office. <laughs> My husband, for years and years, he would leave early for work to beat the traffic. He'd get to work and he'd spend that as his Bible time. And then at lunch, he would go out and walk through the neighborhood and pray. And that was a long time before he was in ministry. 
Come on, a lot of what you do now depends on what doors are going to open for you in the future. Start showing yourself faithful spiritually now. Get dressed spiritually and quit running around naked in the spirit realm. Luke 22. Verse 39. Luke 22, 39. And he came out and went as was his habit. Habit. If you're not in the habit of doing this, it'll be hard in the beginning. But if you get in the habit, then you'll have a hard time not doing it. And he came out and he went as was his habit to the Mount of Olives and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not at all enter into temptation. Now, this is a very important thing I want to say to you this morning. If we're the least little bit honest with ourselves, we know what our weaknesses are. Don't wait till you're in the middle of a tragic situation where you've once again given in to your temptation and then try to pray your way out of it. Pray ahead of time that when temptation comes, you won't get into it. Amen? Pray ahead of time. That's what Jesus was trying to get the disciples to do. Pray that you come not into temptation. He knew that they were getting ready to come into some very difficult times. And he's basically thinking, I'm sure you guys aren't as strong as you think you are. And you need to pray. You're going to need God's help coming up here in about a couple hours. And the Bible says they slept while he prayed. Well, he was able to press through and do the will of God under such tremendous pressure to run from God, and yet he was able to do what God wanted him to do. Peter denied Christ three times. <laughs> Amen. If food is a temptation for you, don't wait until you've already eaten three plates of food and then pray. Pray about it all the time. Pray about it every morning. God, you've got to help me get over this. This is ridiculous for me to let food be my boss. I'm praying, God, for your strength that when I sit down to eat, that I can eat a reasonable amount of food, and when I'm done, I'm done. I'm not going to let a piece of pie boss me around. I'm not going to let a cookie be my boss. The power of the Holy Ghost dwells in me. Come on. Whatever it is, whatever it is, know your weaknesses. I pray every day about my mouth. Every day, every day. God, put a watch over my mouth lest I sin against you with my tongue. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let them be pleasant to the Lord. I don't say a lot of bad and unkind things, but I know that that can be a weak area for me because I'm quick. <laughs> you what? <laughs> I mean, I, I can pull that trigger quick. Anybody know what I'm talking about? See, I not only have a lot to say when I'm up here. But a lot of the rest of it, God's told me, <laughs> So I pray about those things every day. Every day. Pray that you come not into temptation. Come on, how many knows what your weakness is? I mean, if you know that you're going to be tempted to feel sorry for yourself, if you don't get your way, then start praying ahead of time. If spending money that you don't have is a weakness for you, then you pray about that every single day. I am telling you the absolute truth. If you will start praying on a regular basis about the things that are temptations for you, you will have the strength when that temptation comes not to get into it. Nobody can keep temptation away from us. Why did Jesus get up early on that day? It was his habit to get up early. But he went out and prayed 
that he would not come into temptation. He knew temptation was gonna come. He said, God, if you can, Father, if you can, remove this cup from me. I don't wanna go through this. The Bible says he was in such intense agony, he sweated great drops of blood, yet he was also able to say, your will be done and not mine. If I have to drink the cup, then I'll drink it. But he prayed and he prayed and he prayed and then angels came and strengthened him. Ooh, hallelujah. John 8, I want to show you something else interesting. Have you ever said something and then thought, oh man, I wish I wouldn't have said that? <laughs> okay, watch this, John 8. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning at dawn. <laughs> I'm messing with some of your lives, ain't I, right now? I am messing with it, big time. <laughs> Early in the morning at dawn, he came back into the temple court, and the people came to him in crowds, and he sat down and was teaching them. When the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who'd been caught in adultery, they made her stand in the middle of the court and put the case before him. Teacher, they said, this woman's been caught in the very act of adultery. Now Moses in the law commanded that such women offenders should be stoned to death, but what do you say to do with her? What is your sentence? And this they said to try and test him, hoping they might find a charge on which to accuse him. Now, what was going on here? In the law, she had to be stoned, but Jesus was teaching mercy and love and forgiveness. Okay, Jesus, let's see you get out of this one. If you say be merciful to her and forgive her, then you're breaking the law that says to stone her. But if you say to stone her, then you're doing the exact opposite of what you've been teaching, which is to be merciful and kind. Now, what are you gonna do, smart Jesus? <laughs> and I love, now watch this, watch what happens. Here's wisdom at work. But he stooped down and just kind of played around in the dirt. I believe he was waiting to hear what God would say. He didn't just take some action, but he was waiting to hear what God would say. Let's see the next verse, please. However, when they persisted with their question, he got up and he said, I'll tell you what. Let whichever one of you has no sin, you throw the first stone. So right there, he fulfilled the law and kept to his own teachings. <laughs> I don't believe he would have had that answer had he not gotten up early and went up to the Mount of Olives. See, here's the thing I believe. You know, I have to make a lot of decisions through the day. You know, when you're on television like I am, everywhere you go, somebody recognizes you. And, you know, the ones who say something to me are minor compared to all the ones that don't. I, I, I mean... I want to do this, but I have to behave myself. And it's not that I don't want to, but I mean, I can't live a sloppy life. I have to live the life that I'm teaching and telling other people to live. And I just don't know how to do that if I don't spend time with God. I don't know any way to do that if I don't spend time with God. I'm afraid of myself. And I think you ought to be too. I think we need to be afraid of ourselves. But we need wisdom. Get up early in the morning and take care of the hard tasks. Get them out of the way first. Don't let some job you have to do threaten you all day and make you dread the day. You know, different people dislike different things. If you hate going to the grocery store, then get up, get dressed, go get the groceries, get them back home, get it over with. Conquer those groceries. Amen? David got up early the day he killed Goliath. Come on, you're not gonna kill your giants laying in bed hitting the snooze button. Oh, hello. Man, I can't help it, I'm just not a morning person. Well, you know, then whenever you get up, it is your morning. If you're gonna sleep till 10 o'clock, then that's your morning, but you still need to, whatever. whenever you start your day, you need to start it with 
God. And you need to do some things on purpose. You need to make a decision. This is the day the Lord has made. I will enjoy this day. Make an announcement to the devil who is the joy thief. I will enjoy this day. I'm putting on my righteousness. I know who I am in Christ. I'm putting on my peace. Jesus gave me peace. I'm not going to get upset today if I don't get my way about everything. I'm going to use the sword of the Spirit. I'm going to speak the Word of God out of my mouth. I'm going to lift up the shield of faith. I'm going to put on the helmet of salvation. I'm going to put on love. I am going to put on mercy. That don't take long. And man, now you're, you're like set for the day. It's like... You rise up early. You seek God because He is your manna. The Israelites rose up early and collected their manna. That stuff came down early and you couldn't wait for it to melt because you weren't getting anything until the next day. They got up and got their jars and went out and collected it early. Jesus is the bread of life that we need now. I can tell you and I honest to God believe this. I believe that not only here, but probably certainly many hundreds of thousands, if not a few million people watching right now. What I'm sharing right now is the answer to your problems. It's not that you don't know what to do. You've heard enough to know what to do. You just don't seem to have the strength to do it. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Get the difficult stuff over with early. Abraham rose up early the morning that God told him to sacrifice his only son. That would have been a day I would have slept in. <laughs> but no, the Bible says he rose up early. I mean, if this early thing is not important, if getting things right with God, first thing when you get up, whenever your morning is, if it wasn't important, then it wouldn't say it all over the Bible. Set your mind every morning. Now, don't, don't want you to forget what I'm getting ready to say right here, right now. Take a few minutes every morning to have a meeting with yourself. <laughs> so you sit down and you have a chat with yourself. Colossians 3, 1 through 3 says, set your mind and keep it set. So you set your mind. 1 Peter 4, 1 says, arm yourself with right thinking that even if you have to suffer to please God, you will do that. It says, arm yourself with that kind of thinking. Think ahead of time. No matter what I have to do today to please God, I'm going to do it. Even if I have to make a sacrifice, I'm going to live to please God today. Hmm. I'm going to be a peacemaker and a maintainer of peace. I'm going to be adaptable. If I don't get my way, then I'll just adapt and be happy anyway. You all are looking like a cow at a new gate. Like. <laughs> and extremely important, Galatians 10, be mindful to be a blessing. Spend a little bit of time every day thinking about something you can do for somebody else and do it early. Set your mind to compliment everybody you get around. Find something nice that you can say to them. We think sometimes, oh, that's, that's a nice outfit you got on, or boy, your hair is pretty. Well, why not open your mouth and say so? <laughs> say so. What you think doesn't bless anybody. Tell them. The more you compliment other people, the better you feel. Make your mind up to compliment the person that you're married to at least five times today. Hmm. <laughs> One man here on the second row groaned. <laughs> do you know your marriage could be saved if you'll do that? 
And not only that, people will respond to the positive things you say to them and they'll start wanting to make you happy. You can't just complain about everything you don't like. Is anybody home out there? You know, I'm not living by whim anymore and feelings. I've made my mind up to some stuff. I have set my mind. I am going to enjoy my life and I am going to have peace. And I am not going to live in bondage. And if anybody can be free, it's going to be me. Come on, you put up with too much. Stop just putting up with it and putting up with it and putting up with it. Use your will to line it up with God. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? Amos 3, 3. You get yourself in agreement with God. Amen? Amen. Be mindful to be a blessing. Come on, I dare you every morning to think of somebody that you can be a blessing to. Try to give away something every day. Oh, all you got to do is walk through your house. You got so much stuff there, you don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I gave away a bracelet this morning. I told the girl back here in the back, one of the security people, I mean, she doesn't work for us, but I said, your hair is really pretty. I mean, come on, just get over yourself. Yeah, what about me? What about me? What about me? Nobody. <laughs> Okay. Every morning you need to confess the word out loud. Confess the word of God out loud every day. And every day you need to prophesy your future. Say, what do you mean by that? You quit talking about everything as it is. And you begin to call things that be not as though they are. If you don't sleep good, don't say six times every day, I don't sleep good. Boy, I don't sleep good. Man, I have a hard time sleeping. Woo, I don't sleep good. Wow, I need some sleep. Man, I sleep lousy. <laughs> no, you just had a bad night's sleep and you zip your lip. And then every time you get the opportunity, you're talking to God. You say it out loud so the devil can hear you too. The sleep of the righteous is sweet. I believe I sleep good every night, every night, every night. Whew, I get good sleep. Man, I'm feeling sleepy now. No. <laughs> you know what I was thinking this morning? Just as an exercise, if we would really listen to the stuff that we say and that other people say, we better thank God for His mercy. Amen. Start your day right. Angels hearken to the voice of God's word. Psalm 103:20. <clears throat> when you speak the word, angels perk up. Somebody's given us something to do. Yes, yes. Some of you probably have 20 angels assigned to you, and they are so bored. They are just the most bored angels in the universe because you never say anything that gives them anything they can work with. Every day I say, I'm expecting something good to happen to me today. I'm expecting good news. I've had all the bad news I want in my life. I remember when the phone used to ring and <laughs> thinking there's gonna be more bad news. And even if I do get bad news now, I'm ready for it. Because I've already set my mind that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now this is not for lazy people. Because lazy people are hitting the snooze 12 times. Oh, 
backlash, kır. You know, by the time you see me here in the morning, I've already seen God two or three hours, and you better be glad I have. Because all this stuff I say that helps you, that's where it comes from. And it's not, you know, it's not that I get with God and have this three-hour chat. Half the times I don't even feel He's there or hear a thing. It's just the point that when you give God the honor of giving Him the time, then you will see Him show up in your life.